sure you take the right door on your way down. There's no telling where you'll end up. Can you make it through? To the night's end. friend. I thought you were going travelling for a holiday. What's that? Lockdown. Well, that is inconvenient. Well, there was always down here, I suppose. Plenty of sights to see. (laughs) Anyway, I have a special story for you today. Have a seat. Crows and Galahs, written by Jamie D. Munro. Jake rested in the passenger seat to the purr of the car's engine, his head gently vibrating against the window. His father held the steering wheel in one hand and hung his other arm out the window, letting a warm breeze dishevel his greying hair. An endless row of barbed wire and wooden posts separated the highway from the fields of canola, blurring past like yellow brushstroke on blue canvas. A kangaroo leapt in front of them. The car skidded, launching them into their seatbelts. The kangaroo crossed long before they stopped. The smell of burnt rubber drifted into the car. Images flashed through Jake's mind. The premonition returned. His mother followed the chain of taillights through the city in her pink hatchback. Piano music played on the radio while rain roared outside. With a half smile and vacant stare, she was heading home after a long day at work. Swerving across lanes, the four-wheel drive screeched with each turn. It sped through a red light and slammed into his mother's car in an explosion of glass and twisting steel. Slumped through a smashed window, Across the blood-smeared white hood of the four-wheel drive, his mother's sky-blue eyes looked forever to the dark clouds. Jake! His eyes snapped open. Huh? We missed it. His father drove off. It's okay. Jake's trembling fingers pulled at wisps of blonde hair on his chin. Nothing was okay anymore. You looked like you are lost in your own world again. Just, just thinking about mum. The sun flashed in his side mirror, reminding him how far their all-day drive had taken them from home, from the place they had all shared. Every day since, and every mile now driven, pulled him further from the family they once had. She's always on my mind too. His father wiped a tear from Jake's eye. Look at you. You know... Your mother always said grey eyes were some special family secret. Yeah, she always said nice things. I've been real worried about you. Your schooling, at home, you've been distant. His father reached over and rubbed his knee. You're meant to be upset, but it's like there's more going on. He shook his head. I just don't know what's eating at you. I wish I could stop these thoughts in my head coming true. Jake, his father shook his leg. I don't know what more I can do. Jake clawed his seat to control his shaking. There's nothing. You and me, we need to work through this together, you know? Jake looked at his father and saw three months of worry written into his bloodshot, dark ringed eyes. Eyes that once shined with happiness. When they were all together... He wished things had not changed. Guilt stung him inside. If only he had done something. I just wish I could have been there. I'm glad you weren't. To help her. No one could have done anything. His father sniffed. (laughs) It was over in a heartbeat for her. Jake shifted away. To warn her. Oh, Jake. They said she didn't even see the other car coming. I saw her coming. His father grimaced. We've been over this. I love you, but this is killing me. 
He sighed. <sighs> what could you have possibly done? He fixed his father a stare. I kn- knew it was going to happen b- beforehand. His father strangled the steering wheel. Are you crazy? He punched the roof. I'm sorry. I just don't know what to do anymore. I don't know how to help. With our money situation on top of things, it's all been too much. He sighed. I'm just hoping this trip to the country helps. A hot flush coursed through Jake's cheeks. He folded his lanky arms and turned away. Darkness cast by trees and the setting sun blanketed their journey ahead. He wondered if his father would ever understand him. No one else did. A storm of stones awoke Jake as they pulled into a gravel driveway. A farmhouse sat on a rise in the distance, surrounded by a sea of wheat. They parked in a workyard adjoining the home. Dad? His father turned and yawned. I'll show you I'm not crazy. I'm sure you will. His father forced a thin smile and must Jake's curls. A red-orange glow on the horizon stretched across the fields, lighting up a face weathered by 70 seasons farming under the Australian sun. An old man sat perched on the veranda steps, stroking a lamb curled up by his work boots. A chorus of cicadas kept them company. He stood with a groan and the lamb bleated. Now shush. Lucky you've had a pat he said in a drawn-out voice. He stroked the lamb and then extended a grease-etched hand to Jake's father. Carl, good to see you again, Crow. Yep, it was a hell of a time at Claire's funeral, but it was great to see you guys. Crow stroked his beard. Ten years with nothing. Now I see you both again within a few months. Coming out for harvest was a great idea. Carl rested his hand on his son's neck. Especially for Jake, you know? How was your drive, Jakey? Crow asked. Despite Jake being 16, he stood taller than most adults, yet Crow towered a foot taller than him. Jake dropped his face and fidgeted. A calloused hand lifted his chin, and Crow's ash-grey eyes locked onto Jake's. I'm glad you didn't hit that roo. Crow grinned. Shadows leapt into his mind. Darkness enveloped Crow. A shotgun exploded with a flash, lighting the night. He doubled over and fell to the dirt. The porch light shone off Crow's right hair, and his smile pulled out a cobweb of wrinkles. Fear surged through Jake, trembling his body. He did not want any more premonitions. His legs led him backwards. His father stepped forward, reaching out. Jake sprinted to the car, slapped his hands on the hood and closed his eyes. What now? His father shouted. Leave him be, Crow said, still calm. Jake burned inside with embarrassment at letting his father down again. I don't... don't want to be here. He glanced at his father. Oh, I want to go. His father approached and whispered. Pull yourself together. He's a good man. That's why I have to go. A firm hand pressed on Jake's back. Don't worry yourself, said Crow. This place will bring out the best of you. I'll see to that. Just settle in and make a fresh start tomorrow. Jake crept outside at dawn to the screeching from a flock of glass. An explosion of pink and grey wings filled the canopy of a giant gum tree in the backyard. His father sat in a tilted back chair, gazing across the fields. A crisp breeze carried the aroma of coffee from a cup he held in his lap. How are you feeling today? His father smiled, pulling out a chair between them. Uh, fine. Jake scanned the empty workyard. Something on your mind? Where's Crow? Getting the header ready. How about you help him today? Heat flushed through Jake. No. A corrugated iron shed rattled in the workyard. A harvester rumbled out. Leaving a cloud of red dust and exhaust glowing in the morning light, Jake backed up. His father raised his voice over the engine. 
I know his farmhand Nick is out somewhere in the ute. Like you to get involved somewhere, you know? Crow opened the cab door and waved Jake in. Jake snapped his head away, leapt down the stairs and dashed across the backyard. Lucky stood in the far corner, chewing at withered plants, clinging to a rusted fence. Four-wheel drive utility loaded with hay bales on the rear tray skidded to a stop on the other side. The lamb scurried away. The driver wound down his window and shouted, Bro, old crow said you can help him or come out with me. <laughs> but I reckon you'd better come along with me. He looked from Nick to Crow like a rabbit caught between two foxes. Nick pushed his sunglasses up onto the stubble on his head and revved the engine. Oi, get the fuck in already. Jake ducked between the strands of fence, catching his shirt on the barbs as he went through. The rust-spotted door groaned as he opened it and climbed in. Shut the fucking door. You're letting the air corn out. They skidded off. Jake grappled with the seatbelt in the bouncing car. Bro, you don't need a belt up, you dumbass. He snickered, swerving along the road. Jake clenched his door handle. Now here you can drive how you want and shit. Cops can't get you. His tattooed arm wound down the window and he spat outside. <sighs> We're heading out to a far paddock to feed some sheep. He burped up the stench of stale beer. Ugh. I'll let you know when to get out and open the gates and shit. A cry burst into Jake's head. He threw his hands to his ears and clenched his eyes. Hobbling in a frantic circle, the sheep struggled to walk. Crying out, its twisted back leg etched a trail of blood along the dirt. Oi! What the fuck, bro? Nick screwed his acne-scarred face. They sped along the edge of the fields until reaching a barren paddock. A distant mob of sheep marched across the sun-baked earth, chewing at scraps of dry stalk. Jake looked back and forth between Nick and the sheep. Nick accelerated. Hey, slow down. Nick laughed. <laughs> hey. He jerked the steering wheel side to side throwing Jake around in his seat. They skidded to a stop, and the mob surrounded them amongst the cloud of drifting dust. Bro, get out and push the hay off. Jake forced his door open against the sheep, climbed into the back tray, pinching his nose at the stench of manure. The utility crept forward. He pushed the bales off one by one into a cacophony of bleats. Speeding up, the car swayed from side to side. He gripped the bales and squatted. The sheep stampeded behind. Nick braked, launching Jake into the back windscreen. Laughter erupted inside. <laughs> Jake slapped the driver's window. Stop it! You're going to run him over! The car jolted into reverse. Wailing sheep competed with the roar of the engine. Nick slammed on the brakes, throwing Jake to the dirt. Bleating frantically, a U lay on its side. Jake pushed himself up and wiped the taste of manure from his mouth. The sheep hobbled away, dragging a broken and bloody back leg before collapsing. The horn beeped. Oi, get in! Jake knelt by the ewe, reached out to touch it and hesitated, not knowing how to help. His hands shook. Crying out, the animal stared at him. Jake glared at Nick. Help it! Nick sped off, coating Jake in a shower of stones. The sun crawled through the clear sky to midpoint as the sheep's bleats quietened to an occasional moan through bubbling saliva. Jake rested against the sheep's sweat-soaked back, stroking its head. The sheep vision tormented him, reminding Jake he could not avoid his premonitions, even when he tried. The utility crested the horizon. Jake sprung up, sending a cloud of flies buzzing around them. His heart thumped in his chest, beating faster as the engine grew louder. Crow burst out before the car had stopped. Why did he leave here? He ran over to them. He said you wanted to walk back. He chuckled. <laughs> I didn't think you'd want to trek 5Ks in this heat. He ran it over. Jake rasped through a dry throat. I knew he was going to. He looked up at Crow. But I couldn't stop him. Mm. 
Crow shook his head. Some piece of work. He went to the utility and took out a shotgun. A blast of terror shot through Jake, his body locked in place, his mind racing with the vision of Crow. Collapsed on the dirt and gasping, blood pooled around Crow. Crow approached, casting a shadow over Jake. I need to put her down. What? The ewe panted. Move back. Jake stood and dragged himself away. Decaying fences crisscrossed arid paddocks, stretching to the horizon in every direction. An explosion blew through Jake. Jakey, Crow raised his voice. Come back with me. Crow grunted and the utilities tray banged as the dead sheep landed inside. A scorching wind stirred up wisps of sand, stinging his bare legs. Crow drove alongside. Come on, you can't avoid me forever. And besides, too much sun is no good for you. He scratched a dark mole on his cheek. Trust me. I'm not avoiding you. He walked on, scraping his boots with each step. Well, climb in. Crow slapped the outside of his door. Jake stopped and stroked his sunburnt neck. I just want to ride back. He climbed in, burning his legs on the vinyl seat. Let me take you somewhere better. Crow wiped his forehead with a sweat-stained hat. I want to be alone. He folded his arms and turned away. No, you don't. People like us are alone enough already. Trust me. They drove along a track lined with bush on both sides. A tapestry woven with every shade of green word passed. Crow gently steered around the holes and corrugations in the track as a plume of dust trailed behind. A crow stood on the road in the distance, diving its beak in and out of a squashed galah. It watched their approach between bites. Jake looked from the bird to crow, his heart rate increasing. The crow stepped aside at the last moment and then strolled back after they passed. Crow raised his voice over the hot wind howling through the windows. Do you know where we get the saying silly galah from? Jake turned further away. Well, in the country you get an understanding of birds. The galahs are the dumbest. They're at the bottom of the pecking order, far as intelligence is. You could be driving along and a whole fuck will take flight in front of you, only to turn back and fly straight into you. He leaned over. They're stupid. He focused ahead. All other birds are just that little bit smart as you go along. And then there's the crow. He grinned. Nothing surprises the crow. They always see what's coming. They stopped by a granite rock, sitting like an island in an ocean of wheat. The sunburnt red monolith blocked out half the sky, casting a cool shadow. You're gonna need to learn to shoot on the farm. Crow took a shotgun and climbed out. Jake's pulse beat in his ears. He hesitated before following. Crow demonstrated how to load and work the action. He fired a succession of shots, interspersed with quick pumps. The blasts echoed off the rock, and reverberated through Jake long after each discharge. He pushed the gun into Jake's hands. Just aim at something and have a go. Just don't shoot me. <laughs> he chuckled. Jake clasped the gun and aimed at a tree. It swayed in the sights. The moment before pulling the trigger stretched for an eternity. His breaths grew louder and his eye glossed over. His sweaty finger slid off the trigger and he lowered the gun. You can do it, Jakey. Crow steadied the gun. Just point and shoot. You can't miss with this one. He touched the trigger. The butt exploded back into his shoulder. A pungent burning smell filled the air. He pumped the action, unable to contain his grin. Way to go. Crow took the gun and returned it to the car. Let's check on the crop. 
Drooping seed heads caressed his arms as they waded through a waist-high golden field. Crow broke off a seed head, rubbed it between his hands, and handed it to Jake. Eat it. Jake ate the nutty tasting grain. Dry and crunchy. We'll start harvest after the full moon. He caught Jake's eye. Unless the storm comes. Crow turned to the rock. The breeze rustled the field, carrying a sweet smell of sunbaked grain. That's where I asked my dear Maggie to marry me. He took a deep breath. <sighs> we came here every year around this time to check the wheat. He rubbed Jake's back. I know you're suffering over your mum. I can see it. I know how you feel. Yeah? He murmured. No one knew how he felt. I lost Maggie before last season to cancer. It's a... He choked. It's a hell of a way to go. Trouble for me was I knew it was coming. There was nothing I could do to help her. Jake knew that feeling. I wish I had said something to mum. It's like I knew something was going to happen. He quietened his voice. But I didn't, because dad thinks I'm an idiot. Crow gripped Jake's shoulder. I wish I could turn back time too. I wish I had been there for Maggie. I was so torn up before she went that I ignored her. Worst part is I'm now having my own medical dilemma. So I kind of know what she went through. Crow wiped his eyes. Maggie and I had good 50 seasons. I never... I never wanted to have a harvest without her. His chin quivered. I haven't told anyone this, Jakey. But after she died, I came here and nearly ate a mouthful of lead. Jake paused. Finally, someone knew how he felt. I wish I had done more. Your father tells me you came closer to your mum before she passed on. That's something. Yeah, but... Look at me. Crow stood in front of Jake, looking him in the eyes. I know you feel real bad about your mum's passing, but you're not responsible. But someone else is. Crow grinned. And that someone will get his in the end. Crow nodded as the sun silhouetted behind, surrounding him in a brilliant glow. Jake placed a palm on Crow's chest and a burning sensation radiated along his arm. He closed his eyes and released all thoughts. Grasping at his chest, Crow lay on the dirt. A shadow cast in the moonlight stood over him. Sunlight filtered in. He clenched his eyes, turning his head back and forth. The figure turned away. Shotgun hung by its side, its footsteps crunching on the gravel. He opened his eyes, mouth agape. Crow smiled. Come on, you better check the others. The premonition haunted the return journey. Muzzled by doubt, he caged his concern for Crow. His father thought he was crazy, and so would everyone else. Crow seemed to understand him, and he would keep it that way. They found Nick repairing a collapsed fence where the track bordered a salt lake. Skeletal trees punched through the parched landscape among waves of shimmering heat. Come along, Jakey. I want you to see something. He winked. Crow approached Nick with Jake trailing in his shadow. Hey, you clown, said Crow. Nick snapped upright, throwing down a pair of pliers. What? Crow stopped an inch from Nick, leaning over him. What's with leaving the boy out there? Squeezing his fists and bobbing up and down, Nick shouted. Bugger off. He wouldn't fucking get back in. Crow stood firm. Jake stepped back. Well, I'm holding off your pay, said Crow. Glaring at Jake, Nick stepped over and jabbed him in the chest with a bony finger. What did you say, you little faggot? Sweat dripped off Nick's nose. Jake held up his palms. I, I... Darkness flickered into his mind. Moonlight flared in Nick's dilated pupils. With a twisted face, he thrust forward a shotgun, looming over Crow. Sunlight flooded Jake's eyes. I... I... Didn't. Laughter burst through Nick's rotten teeth. (laughs) 
Jake turned and tripped, grazing his hands on the salt-encrusted ground. What the fuck? Nick strolled away. You'll pay me, old man. Crow leant down beside Jake's quivering face. Don't worry about him. He's just a silly galah. He lifted Jake with one hand. Jake faced Crow, unblinking and heaving for air. <laughs> it's alright, Jakey. And n- Nick. Pressure built in his head, and the ground swayed. He his knees buckled and he fell into darkness. A sizzling barbecue aroused Jake to the smell of cooked lamb. Nick raged in his head. The vision had opened his cage of self doubt, and now the final feather in place. His mind flew free on the path to help Crow. He dashed outside and found Crow on the veranda. Hiya, Jakey. Jake dived onto a chair next to him. How you feeling? Crow asked. He put his face in his hands, not knowing where to start. Huh? You passed out. He dropped his arms. Where's Nick? Out fencing with your father. Crow set down two plates of lamb chops and salad. I was hoping you'd eat. He pushed his meal away. Where's your guns? Locked in the shed. Jake scraped his chair back. I hate Nick. Crow grinned. (laughs) Me too. Well, why is he here? He held his breath. He has a purpose here at the moment. Crow chewed on a chop. When he's done his job, he'll be on his way. He slapped a fly on the table so hard the plates jumped. You can be sure of that. But he's dangerous. Crow sipped a beer like time did not matter. Jake sprung up. I just know it. Well, I know stuff too, Jakey. And I have a feeling we need his help here. He wiped his mouth on his sleeve and leant back. I have a feeling too, and... And he's got to go. Listen. (sighs) Crow exhaled. I was passing through town a couple of weeks back. I just had an urge. He picked up his beer and stopped at the pub. That's where I found him. Said he was trying to get away from the city. He took a long swig. I hadn't really been too focused on Harvest this year, but I took one look at him and knew he could help me out. Then I ran with the idea and got you and your dad up too. Jake marched into the backyard, trying to contain his frustration, dry grass scratching his bare feet. The sun had just set. He took a deep breath and turned back. The iron roof of the home glowed under a full moon. A chill crawled up his back like a spider. The rumble of a tractor approached. He ran back. The full moon's tonight? Sure is. He spun to the workyard. The tractor drove in, followed by the utility. He whipped his head back. Nick's back. Crow collected the plates. Everything will be fine. Trust me. Why don't you get yourself an early night? You'll need it. Jake paused, defeated. Just, just be careful. He went to his bedroom and peered through the curtains. Walking like every muscle cramped, his father returned to the house. Nick strutted to his caravan in the workyard. Jake paced the room. His father staggered in and slumped onto his bed on the other side of the room. How's your day? D- Dad? Jake stood still. Yeah? Yeah? His father sat up and rubbed his beard stubble. He struggled to swallow. Remember I said I knew Mum's crash was going to happen? He dove his fidgeting hands into his pockets. Carl let his face drop and exhaled. <sighs> yeah. And you, you said I was crazy. I don't think you're crazy, you know. He cupped his hands on his face. You're just not well. Not well at all. D- Dad... His body trembled. I knew mum was going to die, and I did nothing about it. He wiped his sleeve across his nose. Because people think I'm mad. He threw his hands up. I see things all the time. Bad things. Before they happen. His father shook his head. Shit, Jake. I'm ready to go home. Dad, Nick is going to shoot Crow. Tonight. He burned with rage. What? He stepped closer. I want your help. What the hell are you on about? We're not doing anything. He laid back down. If I wasn't so knackered, I'd leave now. Go to sleep. Jake climbed into his blankets. His body shuddered. He 
he knew he was on his own. He tossed and turned for hours at a loss for what to do. A tapping at the window cut through the silence. Jake scurried to the bed head, his hands trembled. He snatched the curtains aside. A crow perched on the windowsill, staring at him with its midnight black eye. It cawed and flew away into the darkness. Jake jumped back. Moonlight slipped through a gap in the curtains, lighting Jake's father snoring in bed. Jake crept past and out of the room. Floorboards creaked and the back door groaned open. A lightning storm danced on the horizon. Gravel crunched underfoot across the workyard and into the shed. Jake tugged the cold steel handle on the safe and it held firm. He crept back towards the house. Shadows cast in the moonlight stretched across the workyard like dark claws. Goosebumps crawled up his arms. Nick's caravan door screeched. Jake froze. Sweat burst through every pore on his body. Nick swayed in the doorway, the interior light throwing his shadow over Jake. Nick sucked on a glass pipe whilst holding a lighter to the end. He pulled the pipe out. What you doing sneaking around, little pussy? Nick fell back with a crash and laughed. (laughs) Jake sprinted inside and pulled the covers over his head, straining to slow his breaths. Footsteps creaked on the veranda, each step shooting fear into him. He peered through the window. Nick snatched open the back door. Jake leapt off the bed and pressed himself against the bedroom door. Drawers and cupboards opened around the home. A set of keys rattled. The footsteps disappeared outside. Jake sprung to the window and fogged it with his breath. A dark figure went into the shed. Just be quiet. Just be. Crow walked outside. He placed a shotgun by Jake's window and strolled into the shed. Jake launched out of bed, crashing into the floor in a tangle of blankets. He scrambled outside, picked up the gun and scurried to the side of the shed. He leant back against the corrugated iron wall. Sweat trickled into his mouth. The thunderstorm rumbled. The gun safe clanked open. Nick, said Crow, with his calm voice. Oi, what the fuck? yelled Nick. Jake strained to stand, but his trembling legs collapsed and he slumped to the dirt. The gun barrel shook in front of his face. The smell of oiled metal churned his stomach. You're nothing but a thief and a murdering coward. What? Hey, hey, old man, there's been no murder. A shrill laugh erupted. <laughs> Not yet, anyways. I know who you are. You know fuck all, old cunt. You should have paid me. I need my fix. I just need it, okay? Now I'm taking this shit, and you're ute too. You're going all right, said Crow. But not where you think, Nick laughed. (laughs) You killed my niece, Nick went silent. Thunder clapped overhead. You killed her in that crash and ran away like the coward ya. Images crashed into Jake's mind. Nick leapt from the four-wheel drive into the bloodstained shattered glass on the road and ran away. Whoa, whoa, Nick's voice quietened, and I ain't letting you get away with it. You ain't doing shit, old man. Jake's heart pounded. Nick, do it, Crow screamed. Do it, you murderer. An explosion shook the shed. Jake's eyes snapped open. Lightning streaked across the sky. He leapt to his feet. He pulled the gun stock into his shoulder and steered the sights into the workyard. Nick wandered between the sights, saw Jake and stopped. He grinned and lowered his own gun. Pussy. Jake held his aim firm. The back door slammed open. Jake! yelled his father. Nick looked at Carl. Nick! shouted Jake. Carl halted. What happened? Fuck off. Nick raised his gun at Carl. Jake snatched the trigger. Nick flew sideways. He yanked the action back and forth, clenched the trigger and repeated the cycle until the last few pulls ended with empty clicks. Nick's twisted body lay face down, gargling and choking. Jake's ears rung. 
adrenaline surged through him. He dropped the gun and ran to Crow. Crow lay on his back, caressing a wound on his chest. Jakey, he gasped. Jake trembled a sob. (laughs) Blood trickled out of the corner of Crow's mouth. You did it. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. You shot. I did nothing. Jake dropped to his knees and put a hand on Crow's wound. Yet again. Uh, I have cancer. And it was about to kill me. Crow gasped. I chose to go on my own terms. Warm blood oozed through Jake's fingers. What? Crow's hands slumped to his sides. I have visions too, Jakey. Like the crow, you and I always see what's coming. (laughs) Jake cried. I can't do anything about them. You're not meant to. Crow coughed a spray of blood. (coughs) Just make the most of the time you have. You became close with your mum before she passed. You did good. He gasped, and air sucked through a hole in his chest. (laughs) Now don't push your father away. He reached up and caressed Jake's cheek with a wet hand. Jake laid his hand over Crow's. Look after my farm. His hand fell. Crow went still. You've been listening to the Night's End Podcast, which is a production of Dissonance Media. Crows and Galahs was written by Jamie D. Munro and was first published in The Coloured Lens in 2017. You can find Jamie on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram under jamied.munro. Links are in the description. We hope that you've enjoyed this bonus episode and wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The Night's End will be back in January with Season 2 and more fantastic tales. Enjoy your holidays, everyone. And as always, stay horrific, everyone. <laughs>